two guys. Stay, stay. What's on the far right? What happened? Oh, well, boy howdy, my alarm did not go off. I don't know what the problem was today, but uh, we made it. Oh, it was supposed to be eight to 10 mile an hour wind this morning. As you can tell, the socks, there's nothing happening. Absolutely no wind. That's great. <laughs> but lots of birds have been hitting this field um, a lot, like well over 5K. So, should see a bunch of birds. <coughs> Might have to keep trying to hide better as the day goes on here, but let's get going. Shoot him up high, guys. Nice shot. Nice. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Good shooting. Shoot him, guys. Well, that was a lot of geese. Woo! I'm going to open this up a hair more. That was awesome. Finally. I just want to fly early, early morning and uh finally bunching up and wanting to land so hopefully that's the issue we don't have much wind we need a lot more and yeah that was awesome that was good Nice shot. Yeah, we landed quite a few on the right. <laughs> nice shot at the last one there. They liked it. They did it. That was nice. That was nice. <laughs> Y'all gotta smash the thumbs up button. Come on, help a brother out. Help me get to like 2,000 likes. That'd be great. What do you guys think? That was pretty killer, man. Good We're be, all about that. Good to be back. It's great. To Love be to be back. Love the lesson. Is that cool? You Buddy, it? awesome. Once he opened up the middle, they're coming. Right? It changed a lot. Yeah, changed everything. All those birds were floating that way, not giving us a look. Once he opened that middle, right on top of us. Yeah, awesome. Great shoot. Well, here's a spread today. Uh, this is what I did. Nothing was working, so I opened up a big hole, and I truly believe it helped a bunch. Um, I really do. So we got the full bodies on this side, sillas and socks on that side. No, right oh, I didn't see that, and uh, I really think it's working decent. Gotta give them a place to land, I think, you know? Plus these later birds, they wanna fly for a little bit, bat their wings, and then they're ready to, ready to land and eat. So it should be getting decent here. a tall shot. Yep, they were getting ready to leave. Man, what do you think that is? They set up, they look twice, they they do it all just like we want, and then oh, yeah. they get to 45, and they're just like, yeah, 
I thought I had one more spin out of them. I know. I did too. They get over us. Mm -hmm. And then that's where it kind of ends is when they get over here past the kill hole. <sighs> Lens is dirty. Well, drop a comment down below if you know what's wrong. Because we don't. Good guy. Swings and misses, boys. Damn it. <laughs> Shoot, guys. They went, they, we had to corner them three wow. times. Ah. Hit them on the corners hard, then relax on the calling as they come. Very cool. That is how that one worked out. Shot. I shut buddy. the camera off. Right? I didn't think you were going to do it. I go watch this. And yeah, that was good. One single. Very good. That was a good flock. That was a big flock. They're really starting to come in here, buddy. That was awesome. Right side. Shoot them. Nice shot. Nice shot. They got out of there pretty darn quick, boys. Pretty darn quick, but they did it. It's a uh, 9:45, so um, got some more birds working. It's a late morning. I like it. Got it. Hill GoPro can work. You got it. That's a good pile. Yeah, it is. I didn't think it was gonna go that good this morning when they reacted early, early. The minute we opened up that hole. Yeah. They needed a place to land first of all. Second of all, there was no wind. Yeah. The, the socks looked horrible. Yeah. Wind picked up and it started working. There was some stuff I didn't get to film today. I don't do piles very much, but we did shoot three big old honk daddies. Fun? Yeah, man. Super fun. Dude, day. Rick, mm -hmm. he did an absol absolute long shot. Yeah, how far do you think it was? That was 75. Easy, easy. 75 easy. I think he might have made two. Yeah. Two. Rick's, Rick is a little more old school when it comes to goose hunting. And where he grew up, where we were, your only chance was sky busting at him. Right. So for Rick to win from the finish, he's like, I always say, he's like, <laughs> he's like the dog in the blind. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, You are too. He's like, oh, come on, yeah. Yeah. I heard, I heard you down there the whole time. He's down there chatter. Oh, baby. Oh, oh, baby. Oh, geez. Oh, goodness. But you can make the long shot. Yeah, that was. You gotta shoot it. I seen you pull up at the last and you just steadied up and then go bloop. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Heck of a shot. Black cloud, baby. Black cloud all day. change that part <laughs> I <know>. kind of <laughs> sounded like two days ago though yeah yeah uh welcome back to episode 39 and this is a fun one uh love these guys love when they come to town <coughs> they make it really fun we got rick and dan from federal and i'll let them kind of introduce <coughs> themselves but this is your guys's third this is the third year i've hunted with both you guys yes yeah, yeah third trip for us and uh Man, it's been fun every time. They they bring bring the ammo for us, and they just want to shoot. Yeah, and I love it. I love <laughs> it because I'm a shooter. Yeah. Um, Rick Stokel been with Federal a long time, um, product director over Shot Show and other things there. And, you know, been there a long time, and we've had a lot of changes lately. And we're talking about 
you know, the whole ammunition business today. And, and uh, about a year ago, we purchased Remington ammunition yep. and heavy shots. So it's been a wild ride, but uh, we're a big player. And, you know, putting the synergies of all three companies together is really what we're about. Um, and in this industry today, it's or in this marketplace today, it's just unique. And uh, we just can't make enough. We are really um, doing everything. We're working 24-7 basically all of our plants and uh, it's just tough getting supplies and raw materials but uh, we're doing everything to make sure we got ammunition for you guys yeah absolutely yeah and i'm dan compton so i work for rick Um, i've been on the product team for about 10 years now and kind of how i define our roles to people is overall strategy for our category that that comes from rick you know he's like in waterfall we want to be a leader in the industry we got to have the you know we always try to have a one or two in every category you know like a, a you know, a category leader. Rick says, we need to grow waterfall this bit this year. We're going to do that with this level of marketing. And Dan, what products do we need to do that? And then it comes up to me to fill the holes within that. So we're kind of a, a tag team from, from that regard. Yeah, we got a, got a really good team. And, uh, you know, veterans like Dan's been there a long time now. And basically our whole team, the engineers <clears throat> as well. Um, so they, they add a lot to it. We're all hunters, all shooters. So we spend a lot of time with guys like you. And uh, it just means a lot um, to be out there with, in the business with the hunters and shooters to understand what the needs are, how the market changes, which changes rapidly and, and a lot. The ammo sh- shortage started with COVID. Is that what caused it? Just kind of run me through your view of the whole ammo shortage and how it started yeah. and where it is now. I think there's a few different things involved there, and, and politics are a big one. Yeah, you know, we've seen, you know, when a change of um, change of uh, Democrat Republican, when that changes, things go up or down usually. And you've been there a while. That's with every right. election, right? We've seen it um, probably three times now. I have anyway, and and the last one was big. This one is just seems to be bigger. And then with COVID and everything, more people hunting, more people shooting. Um, we've seen a lot of changes at retail with, you know, some of the players kind of going out of the game. Um, just everything, and just more people hunting and shooting. And then that with the political climate, it's just been <coughs> rather interesting. And uh, I definitely think a lot more people are hunting right now. Yeah, like really. I mean, we're we're running into a lot of people hunting just in a, around our areas. Like, there's yeah. a lot of kids that online schooling, so a lot of yeah. high school kids are are I hunting more now. Yeah. How about new shooters, new hunters? <sighs> yeah, I mean, there's always seems every year you know a new little group kind of pops up in the area, which is great that's awesome Mm -hmm. but uh definitely like usually the weekends here you always hear other people shooting but right now it's pretty much every time we hunt we hear other people shooting i think a lot more people are getting out now the only thing i can think of is like that online schooling people have more free time yeah for sure so what are you guys doing to i guess combat the ammo shortage in in the warehouse what What's going down? Right. Um, it, it, and it's it's just all hands. It's been that way for basically a year and a half. We're maybe even longer than that. We've been working 24-7, full shifts. Um, and, and literally the, the issue now is trying to keep up with the raw material shortage. So we see it in plastics, powder, lead, steel. All coming. Bullets, everything. All <coughs> coming from China, in, no, overseas? Well, inside, what we make, what other people make, we, some things come from overseas, but... It's just a backup of all this stuff, and there's issues all over the place. So um, we're doing a really good job. Our supply folks, it's they're under the gun, but they're doing a really good job making sure we have supplies to run the thing. So the supply chain right now that everybody's talking about right now, we're talking about it with yep. everything. Is it affecting you guys pretty <coughs> big or no? Yeah. 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 And yeah. not, you know, it's not, I mean, we're running at rates that are historical highs for our company, and whether that's the federal location or heavy shot in Oregon or, or and Remington's kind of a different scenario because they were in bankruptcy and, you know, we had to bring them back up to speed. And that's the process that's still happening. And I think that's mainly labor, but they've been hired. I can't remember how many people. It was 800. Something yeah. Something like that. Yeah. It, so they're, they're maybe bringing manpower in, but it's, you know, whether today it could be, it's powder. And so we're just like any other hand loader out there. We'll have alternate loads that we can use, you know, we'll have a primary and a secondary so we'll switch load because now we can run that powder. Well, then tomorrow, now we're out of steel shot, and that truck doesn't get here for four days. So we'll switch to lead. 
and you know, depending on this loading cell can do this and this loading cell can so do you're that. You're just doing whatever so you can work on pivot currently. So pivot so that we can keep the place running 24 seven and always go, go, go. And that's across whether that's shot shell, rim fire, center fire, handgun, it's every day there's some different challenge we're facing and it just keep the machines running so we can crank it out. But you guys are doing a great job. There's, there's no doubt. I mean, we, it is. we are really putting out a lot of product. Some people might not think so because you can't find it, but uh, you're seeing things as soon as it hits the shelf, it's basically gone. Heard many many yeah. stories of consumers following. I mean, me myself, around. I literally yeah. check sporting goods stores to see which you know just did it the other day. Sure, oh, you can get two cases. I bought two cases right, right yeah. there. You know, like I don't I don't even shoot through regular season. I sh- only shoot for snow geese. Yeah, I had I had a great example of a guy. We were working uh, the ducks event. Ducks Unlimited put on a big festival in, mm-hmm. in um, June in Texas. It, yeah, in Texas. Yeah. And he came up and he said, so where, where's all the, how are we going to be doing for hunting loads in the fall? And he was talking to Center for a Rifle. And I said, well, it's going to be tough. I mean, we're, we're back ordered and we're making what we can. And he goes, yeah, last year I went to Walmart and boy, they, they still had 243 and 270 and 36. He said, I bought it all. I bought everything they had. They didn't have limits. And I said, well, sir, you just answered the question for yeah. us. Because that's you're, not. Yeah. You're getting into you're just, my next point. You're just point. Yeah. one person. That's alone. not normal purchase behavior, <laughs> no. right? And I said, so what. I mean, as unfortunate as it is, I mean, we'll do our best to stock those shelves, but that's going to take a while. Yeah. I said, it might be up to you that you have to give some of your ammo to your buddies to keep them hunting and in the field, Mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah, people are purchasing different, too. And, and I mean, and, and it's regular, just just <coughs> like toilet paper. If you thought it was going to be gone, yeah. you bought three cases when you normally bought one every six Well, six I mean, I weeks. remember back in the day, like, I would never buy a case at a time. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. like, oh, we're going to duck hunt in the morning. I shouldn't shoot more than a box. Yeah. Go buy a box. Sure. You know, or we got a big goose hunt with ducks in it. All right, I'll buy two boxes a certain, you know. Mm-hmm. That, now, now where it's like as many as you can buy. Yeah. That was leading into my question. The hoarders and scalpers are mm-hmm. ve- affecting it huge. Yeah, yeah. Scalper, scalpers is always a part. And when we saw, you know, we've seen ups and downs in the past, like we referred to earlier. Whenever... Like sitting like twenty twos was a, was a big thing. That was one of the last things for us to catch up the last time. Until there's no value in that secondary market selling, you know, it's gonna be hard because as long as there's people waiting at the doors in the morning to see when they know those ship the the shipments are being unpacked, you know, until there's no incentive for you to stand there, go get that, and then put it online and flip it, you know, that's another drain on the system that a regular you know shooter. Mm-hmm. Isn't, isn't thinking about it. they got a day they got a day job or whatever they they want to go buy ammo and have it there when they're ready for it and when someone's taking it putting it online and as long as someone's willing to pay triple quadruple five times what it's worth do it, people pay that much oh absolutely, absolutely. I, I, for i brad schaefer <laughs> yeah he needed a uh for his hunt he just built yep he built a brand yeah. new um i can't remember what it, round it was you guys make it because that's the rounds i gave to him but uh, he couldn't find any of his stores up there, and I knew a guy who was hoarding ammo. Right. And I texted him, and next time I saw him, he's like, just give me $10, $10 more a box, which was fine. He didn't have any other option to go down to New Mexico. He needed needed something and needed to get it sighted in with those rounds. Yeah. And, and that was a special tag, too. Like, he drew a special yeah, tag. Sure. Yeah. He built the gun for that tag and needed the ammo, and I... Had the guy. You know, I mean, he, he's going to he pay. Did he tell you he drew another tag in Texas? <laughs> this guy, I swear. He, he's the luckiest guy in the world. He drew, it's an Oryx, I think. Hmm. Uh, that guy. They're I want to go on They're some of those. Yeah. Uh, so, the Russian ammo ban. I remember hearing about this on the news. Has it? I haven't heard about this at all. Yeah, from my understanding, it's not a ban on... Um, Russian ammunition per se, it's a ban on allowing any new import permits going forward. So if your company is already set up and you're ready to go, you can import ammunition. At some point, those retire, and they may not be able to update it. And that's about as much of an expert as I can pretend to be on. Okay. So. No, that, that's right. It's, it's, it's not something that is going to happen today. Yeah. I don't know if it will happen, but literally there's, there's a bunch of permits to Dan's point that are out there into the future. Mm-hmm. So they'll be bringing product in for that. Yeah, and normally, you know, we've talked about this internally. You know, you have your your big American suppliers, and typically, it seems like people prefer to shoot 
you know, to shoot American ammo, mm -hmm. but they will depending on price and availability. And I, it just must be with COVID. Like we've, we've been kind of watching for some of the, the big imports to show up and we haven't seen a lot of it. And we just think that like the world supply chain has been affected in such a way that we're, we're not seeing that big influx, which is what probably the market <clears throat> will need to help it kind of catch up, you know, or it'll take longer, you know, as the domestic suppliers keep cranking it out. But yeah, we haven't seen a bunch of the, a bunch of the Europeans flooding the market that we, that we have seen in the past too. And the, you know, the, in the issue I, it bothers me too, is when we get into season, you know, if you can't find nines and other things, I, I understand and people hoard that. But when you get into season, you need your products <clears throat> to hunt ducks, deer, whatever, that's tough. You know, the guys rely on that. So I think these hunt hunters and shooters now are getting ahead of it more. They're not <coughs> buying ammo right before the season. They're actually getting ahead of it. Way before. 